Well, good morning. It's uh, a nice spring morning, mid-April, and uh, I'm out chasing carp. I'm here with my buddy Kevin, and he's just rigging up now. He, uh, he actually just lost a nice fish he had on, and I don't even think he had his line in the water more than two or three minutes. Um, we're just getting started. We're up in a, a little stretch of Lions Creek. Uh, you know, I've been fishing here since I was a kid. I love this spot. But it's, it's just, it's that time of year. The water temperature has risen pretty good up in these high-end uh, parts of the creek where it's really shallow and the fish are moving around. I stopped in last night after work just to check it out and there was so much fish activity, you know, rising everywhere here and there, uh, panfish chasing minnows and such. So had to get out this morning and try it. So we're, we're both trying a, a similar technique, but slightly different. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens and see what we get into. So stick around. Okay. It's, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see me, but we're in the shadow of the bridge we're fishing around. And uh, actually, we've had an exciting couple of minutes here. Kev just had his line. He had a great take. He set the hook and the fish wasn't there and we were both surprised that he's got a, a, a wonderful rig that should definitely be having him no issues whatsoever, but he has lost a couple of small fish and then that big take. And what, maybe two, three minutes after that take goes, out of nowhere my rod goes, and I'm fishing a lot further down river, and it's, it's a little guy, little guy, hard to see, I think, but uh, you know, it's it's a great, great fish, and it's the first carp I've gotten this year of 2015. So I'm I'm quite excited. Oh, we get him right up in the sun there, just at the top. Of there. But yeah, what a great way to start off my my open water fishing season of this year. Beautiful fish, great shape, nice little five or six pounder. I'm gonna get him back. And we'll talk a little bit about the rig. Okay, so that was a pretty decent fish we got there. You know, great way to start my open water season, like I said. And, and, you know, Kevin's definitely put us onto a good spot today. We've had the activity where he's had a couple of good strikes, and, you know, we just got that fish moments ago. The sun's just starting to come up past the tree line, so it's, it's starting to hit our air. You can see just behind me. Um, and that's going to help warm that water up where we are, so it really should only get better from there. Now, to show you the rig that I'm using, um, you know, I'm a big fan of leg clips and that's what I really like to, to have on. But in this particular case, it's, it's quite shallow water, but it's difficult casting. Um, I want a very streamlined rig for what I'm doing today. So I'm going with the inline pair lead. As usual, free running, but I keep my little swivel just wedged right up into the bottom. Now something I've just started using is a quick link. Uh, let's see, let's see that. Yeah, move my head out of the way. So a quick link to that swivel, an anti-tangle sleeve up over that quick link, and uh, only about you know a six or seven inch hook link to my hook. A sl split shot on there because I am using pop-up corn with this boily. But the other unique thing about this particular setup here is that it's not just a, a straight hair, it's a monofilament hook link. And then I have a braided hair coming off of what they call the D-Rig. And uh, you know, maybe down the road I'll do another video on how to tie that. But it's, it's basically just a little piece of monofilament that just hooks up over where your knot would be and goes back through the eye to create what a D, essentially, of mono. And your hair is tied to that, so it's got a lot more free movement. And uh, having, that was the first fish I've caught with this rig and it stung it right away. So it's definitely a rig to, to go with. Uh, I'm quite impressed actually. And uh, the final thing that I'm doing, you know, I could be using PVA today, but I, I'm lazy. I don't want to make up the bags. So what I did last night is I made up my own bait smoke. Um, I guess the, some of the companies in the UK make that stuff called the goo. Um, I don't have it accessible to me here, so I made my own. Uh, there's plenty of videos online about how to do it, and uh, all I'm doing, just put it in this little squirt bottle, 
and I'm just coating my boilie with it and that piece of pop of corn and apparently my fingers as well. Nice thick coating and I'm smearing it on there. And uh, Kevin's using it as well. And what he's actually doing is he's putting it on his sinker. Um, so he's got it up on here as well to make sure that there's also that extra bit of scent that maybe his hook bait doesn't have the surface area to hold. And uh, you know, certainly he's getting more bites than I am. So it's definitely working and helping us out. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this back in and try another one. And maybe uh, after the next fish, we'll talk about how we're baiting up our area. Uh, something that I haven't tried it's very different from my normal procedure so yeah we'll see what happens when we get another fish oh, yeah this is, this is a better fish than that first one for sure. oh okay it's bigger than I thought it was Big control. Oh! I think we got like a we got like a 15 or 16 pounder here. This is a beauty. Okay, we're gonna get him situated here. We got a lot of tweaks in the way, but uh, he's in the net, we're ready to go. not expecting that to happen. Again, I thought for sure Kevin was due for the next fish. You know, he's got a prime setup. He's baiting his area really well. And uh, as, as in typical fashion, I'm trying to set up the, the Facebook page with our activity this morning. And sure enough, my rod goes off right when I tell Kevin, I think you're about due for a bite. And uh, just gonna get this guy out of the net and on the mat here. I don't want to get a weight of them here. What a beautiful fish. Nope. They come right under right the mat there. fish of this year, second carp, and it's, it's magic. What a wonderful fish. Let's get this guy back. just put my line out. I walked away from it to see what Kevin was up to and bam, another fish right away. Like that water, that wasn't even in the water. I don't even think it was two minutes, was it? No. I'm not a big guy. This one's another smaller one like that first one, maybe maybe five or six pounds, but uh, still a welcome fish. So. What another beauty fish. You know, there's, that first one and this one, not too big, but aggressive strikes, wonderful fight. You know, I'll, I'll take three or four of these just as well as I'll take that 18 pounder we got earlier. And uh, 
you know, this is this is a riot, and I really have Kevin to thank for the way he's baiting this area. I have every confidence that it's his baiting technique that's actually putting us into these fish today. So I'm gonna try and get him to give up a couple of secrets here shortly about how he puts his, his mix out in the water. I won't pressure him for ingredients, that's just not right. But yeah, I wanna to talk to him about his baiting technique because I'm, I'm, I'm certain that he's the reason we're catching these fish today. So I'm gonna get this one back. We'll have a chat to see what we can get from him. Want me to reel them in? Reel it in? No, I'm good. Man, man this, is, this is great. But this is another situation where I just cast out and it just went right off. Like, I walk away from it and it's right, right away. I don't know what's going on out there, but they've got the feed bag on. He's in that. We got him. This is fish number four. What an exciting morning. Oh my. Get in there, buddy. So it's another little guy, but you know, if you're hitting fish, let's get back in the sun here. Really, if you're hitting fish, you can't complain at all. You know, this is probably the scrappiest one I've had yet today. And uh, very streamlined, very strong, it was all over the place, head shaking, beautiful fight, really tough fish. Now Kevin's getting in there and uh, fishing out a little bit deeper uh, than he was earlier. And he's, uh, he's testing out the alarm there for a few minutes because the last two casts I've put out, a fish has smacked it within less than a minute, minute and a half. So we're on to something out where we're baiting out there. And uh, I'm still working on him to get him to show us his ground bait setup. So stick with us and hopefully we'll get another fish. All right, Kevin, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions about your, your ground bait and, and your setup. Um, I don't wanna take, keep you too long because you got a line in the water and you did just have a little bump there. Um, so you've got a lot of a lot of great ingredients in your mix. Um, what are some of the ingredients that are most crucial? Do you think? Probably the scent. I got uh, as a base uh, duck duck starter feed, which helps uh, pack the ball. But in here, I got some uh, canary seed, some uh, anise for uh, cold water bait. Okay. And uh, most importantly, the hemp. Hemp. Okay. Yeah. And. The cold, UK you know, videos that I watched, everybody over there uses hemp. Cold water, warm water, it always seems to bring the fish. Whether I can catch them, that's a different story. <laughs> but definitely when I leave this bait on the bottom, I always see fish in the swim. Right on. And so you just, I'm assuming you just add a little bit of water to it when you get here sort of thing? And I add uh, water, but uh, at home I use, uh, uh, before I come, I use a can of uh, Blenderized uh, cream cor or uh, sweet corn out of a can. Oh, right on. To add the juice and the natural smell. And that also probably helps the fish. Absolutely. Okay. Sometimes uh, leave them like this. Sometimes you can add flour a little bit to make it uh, fall apart more, um, uh, slower. Right. Okay. Like it's a uh, gooey. And that's all you're doing. You're just packing them tightly into Pack like golf in. ball size. Sometimes balls. I let it let it air out a little bit, and then uh, these are small because it's all I got left just for, a little for bit today. Left, yeah. But uh, normally when I start fishing, uh, I throw out three, four uh, hardball, uh, softball size baits and then that makes a nice carpet. And then I try to put my hook bait on top of the carpet. Right on, okay, that sounds good. Uh, very similar to what I do with like a PVA bag, but this is a little bit more instantaneous, I guess. 
And that probably starts to break down even as it's sinking as well, yeah. right? Sometimes even if, if you're not confident, you, you can take a little piece, pack it, drop it in the shallow water, watch how it, uh, watch how it breaks. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I've already said, I, I, I really think that the fish that we've got in the activity that we've seen today yeah. is a direct result of your baiting technique. And, uh, uh, you know, another crucial factor is being cold water, we weren't quite sure how the activity was going to be. You actually were able to pop down last night and throw a couple of these balls out. And uh, I really think that that has, has the biggest role to play in making sure that we had fish to catch here this morning. Yeah. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of spice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, uh, you know, you can use hot pepper or stuff, but spice and um, c certain ingredients are better for cold water. And then there's other ones that are more favorable to the fish come warm water, like uh, strawberry or vanilla. And and this is your own recipe, so obviously we don't want to give away all the details, but like this is very similar to commercially available ground bait mixes that you can get from your local tackle shop or order online, uh, you can do the same thing. And, you know, you've seen maybe if you watch uh, the UK fishing shows and stuff, they use like method feeders and stuff. Same sort of deal where they've molded it right around the sinker, but in this particular case, Kevin's just uh, making it as kind of like a, a, a ball on its own just to toss out. And he can, you know, pinpoint where he wants it to cover a wider area than say a PVA bag would which is what I started with today but didn't get any bites during that time so uh, clearly this makes a big difference having more of a wide space for these fish to grub around in and with the the small particles you know some of those are really really tiny that sinks into the sediment in, among, in amongst the the debris that's on the bottom you know being spring nothing's really grown up out of that yet and uh, I, I'm sure that those fish are really, really working to dig this bait out of there. Smell that. Ooh. I want to... Oh. That smells wonderful. I, I, I almost want to just throw that in the oven and cook it up. Like, that smells good. That's that's some of those spices that you were telling me about. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for giving us that uh, that little tip on, on baiting. I Again, I, I really think that that is the reason we're doing well today, so... Let's get back at it. Hopefully we get a fish. Yeah. Now it's been a little bit slow for us, but uh, you managed to score yourself a little bullhead there, eh? Yeah, rather have been a carp. Well, a fish is a fish. You know, that's a nice confidence boost that you know your rig is working, working the way it should be, right? Mm -hmm. I'll let you get him unhooked and uh, get him out. Do you have pliers handy, John? Uh, I do. Yeah, I'll get those for you and uh, then we'll get him back. Nice job. Oh, it's out. Oh, it's out? Okay. Not bad. That's a chunky little guy. Eh? It's a yeah, good okay. size for a bullhead. Right on. Excellent. All right, let's get him back. Well, it's still a little bit crazy here. It's been so slow for, for quite a while. And then. Kevin just got into a fish, but it wrapped him around a log or something, and he came off. And then seconds later, my fish went off here. He's in the, in the crap here. There we go. We got him in the net. Nice. It's been a while. It's been. And almost two hours or so since we got a fish. Now I need to get them unhooked and we'll get a good look at them. And there we go. After a nice, nice relaxing stretch of no activity. And then, boom, two smacks right away. Luckily I was able to hook mine. Kevin's already back in. Looks like he might be getting a bite soon. It's, you know, it, it might be just turning right back on. Not another big fish, but another beautiful fish, another common. And uh, wow, this is what, number five? Huh. A great morning. We were just packing up too. And uh, yeah, unbelievable. Wasn't, wasn't ready for that. But I think we're going to stick it out for a little bit longer than planned. But uh, you know, I'm going to get this guy back and wow, we're going to enjoy this morning a little bit more. But it's been a good day. You know, I learned a lot about baiting technique and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So, you know, 
and we're gonna give it what another half hour if we get a fish maybe we'll show that to you but uh, overall I think we're gonna pack it in for today and well, until next time enjoy your time on the water